Good morning! This is Bill from Auto House of Naples on a muggy, miserable, crappy, horrible Florida Wednesday. I mean, it sucks. Uh, today was the worst of the worst. I got here to Peter's place while it was still dark. Uh, in fact, so dark, I think at one point I saw bats in the air, like dozens of them flying around me. And, you know, if birds are bad, which they are, and I can hear them chirp, there's one. I can hear them chirping around me now, probably plotting an attack. Then bats are far, far worse. Flying rats through the air, uh, that they, they're blind, which means they, I know they've got that sonar crap, but they could still fly India. I mean, how do you know the sonar works? Uh, the thing could just break at any given moment. Next thing you know, you got a bat in your face. Uh, the only thing I have going for me is the weed whackers that just started, or at least a little bit farther away, so probably not going to be too annoying. And I haven't seen any goats. In fact, I haven't seen any goats for the last uh, few times that I've been here, which either means that they're keeping them out of my way, which would be great, uh, or they're, you know, somewhere behind a tree uh, trying to figure out the best way to rush me. So... Anyway, we'll keep a wary eye out for whatever's around, and hopefully none of the goats, chickens, roosters, or other insane animals that Peter decided to keep around this place come out. Uh, what I've got today actually cheers me up a little bit. It really, really does. I needed this. God, did I need this. Uh, this is a 1983 Cadillac Fleetwood Brome d'Elegance. Uh, it's not actually badged as a Coupe de Ville, although it is essentially a Coupe de Ville. Uh, but the uh, Brome d'Elegance was a uh, option package that sort of upped the ante a little bit. Certainly upped the sticker price and uh, made a rather beautiful car. This one is finished in a beautiful uh, metallic claret red. Uh, it's got matching burgundy leather. It's got my favorite wire wheel covers. Uh, it's got the big chrome grille. Uh, this was the refresh that came in 1980, which I think really improved the look of this car. This is a C platform, I believe, going from memory on that from uh, General Motors, which uh, denoted the convertibles and the coupes and the full-size rear. There's a front drive C platform, but this is the rear drive. Uh, it made the grille a little bit taller. Uh, it uh, flattened the back window, made it more uh, uh, horizontal, sorry, vertical than it used to be. And uh, to me, it's the ultimate incarnation of this generation caddy, uh, which was a downsized version, came out in 1977. Hard to believe that this thing is downsized. It's enormous, but, you know, that's the way cars worked in the past. Uh, anyway, when I saw this thing, I had to have it. I mean, it's one of the cars of my youth, and a Cadillac built by people who actually liked Cadillacs. I mean, uh, listen to the name of this thing. Cadillac Fleetwood Brome d'Elegance. Uh, what do you get now? You get a DTS. You get a DTS. I mean, what the hell does that even mean? Uh, there is so much history in the four names on this car uh, that you could write 20 history books just on each one of them. Uh, obviously, starting with Cadillac, that's that uh, famous scoundrel, Antoine de la Moth, uh, Sir de Cadillac, a guy who invented himself as nobility out of basically nowhere. He was essentially a French pirate uh, who came over and ingratiated himself on rich people and seduced them daughter of a wealthy merchant and ended up founding Detroit essentially and that's where he uh, got his claim to fame where, where the name Cadillac came from but he was a real bastard uh, from all uh, available reports. In fact, he made up this whole, this thing I love, the Cadillac, the wreaths and the crest. I know I've been corrected on this but I swear it has ducks on them. Uh, this thing right here. Uh, this is Cadillac's coat of arms, and uh, he made it up out of whole cloth. It didn't exist at all. This was just something that he, uh, you know, presented to create the nobility that, uh, you know, wherever he came from, which just didn't exist. But anyway, so you've got that, and as we know, uh, Henry Leland, the guy who also formed uh, Lincoln, built Cadillac, or started Cadillac, which then became a big part of General Motors. Uh, then you've got Brome, which is named for a guy named Henry, a lot of Henrys at this time. Uh, Henry Brome was a guy who would go on to be the uh, Lord Chancellor of Britain at one point, but he was kind of a, now we've got tractors, big, noisy, friggin' tractors, great. Peter should really move out of the country. Uh, but anyway, Henry Brome was a, kind of a liberal politician, 
Uh, he defended, um, what the hell was her name, Catherine of Brunswick. Uh, she was married to King George IV, who decided that he hated Catherine of Brunswick after they had a child. She just apparently was a real twat and uh, George had had enough of her. So he wanted a divorce, but he couldn't get a divorce at that time uh, because uh, it just, you know, unless there was adultery, you couldn't get a divorce. So uh, he tried, he tried, he couldn't get it. So then he came up with this idea to make a law to actually have, you know, the British Parliament vote on his divorce. And it was called the, I don't know, the Pain and Suffering Act or something, uh, Pain and Penalties, where he presented, actually presented two the British Parliament, two giant green bags of evidence about what a bitch and cheating whore Catherine of Brunswick was. Uh, unfortunately for him, the public thought she was great. They liked her. They didn't like him. They thought he was a greedy bastard. So uh, none of it went particularly well for him, uh, even though he said that, you know, she had done scandalous things like bathe with her male Italian housemaid and sat on his knee and had dinner with him and all sorts of terrible things. Uh, but anyway, they wouldn't grant the divorce, and she wanted to come back and be queen of uh, uh, of England and Ireland, and, and I think she did finally get her way, as women tend to do in court. So uh, anyway, that, that's a guy named Henry Brougham. Why the car was named for him, I don't know. I guess he liked this Brougham-style carriage, which was a single horse-drawn thing with two or four people in it, and, and that's how the uh, Brougham thing came about. Uh, Fleetwood, a company that built bodies for a multitude of different cars before being bought by Fisher Body Company, uh, which is on the door sill of this car. They both started right around 1909. I think there's a year apart. Uh, Fleetwood is another one of these grand fraud names that, you know, supposedly came from the great Fleetwood family of Europe, uh, but in fact might have been named for two railroad guys or just because it sounded neat. Uh, it became a stop between Allentown and Reading, Pennsylvania. Uh, it was full of all these uh, Austrian and German immigrants who were very good at coach building. Uh, they are, uh, a company started providing bodies for a few different companies. One of the companies really liked that company, so they bought them and moved them to Ohio. And then from the ashes of that company, uh, Fleetwood was born, and they started building bodies. You know, back in these days, uh, car companies just sort of built rolling chassis, and then they were sent out to uh, body makers. That's why you see things like Body by Fisher. Uh, Back in the early days, there were all these sort of custom-crafted coach bodies where rich people could choose all the different body styles and materials and leathers and woods and metals and all that sorts of things. So there was uh, a, a real custom touch to cars, but uh, that became, you know, as cars became more prolific, as they became more open to every segment of the public, that obviously had to change. And uh, these companies then got into building more mass-produced bodies for the makers. And uh, Fisher, which was started by, you know, I'm starting to see a thread where if you have like 14 kids, uh, a few of them are going to be successful. I wish I would have taken this path, although dealing with one would probably be too much for me. But anyway, so like seven Fisher brothers started this body company. They became very successful, and then they bought the Fleetwood Company, which was also run by like seven brothers, I think a guy named Urich or something. And uh, together they started making bodies for uh, GM, no more for every, they had made Stutz, Hispano Suiza, Lincoln, uh, also even Carl Benz used them, but uh, eventually it just became all GM, and then the rest is history, so uh, we move on through the years, sorry for all that, but you know, again, when I see DTS, this is why I get pissed off, I mean, the rich history just in the name of this car is astounding, uh, and there's the phone, of course I didn't put it on mute because I'm a retard, anyway, uh, you get into the lines of this car, and what I miss about cars, you've got the four headlamps up front, you've got the big grill, you've got the wreaths and crests on the hood star leading the way, big chrome bumpers, love the squared off wheel wells, uh, love the uh, body molding down the side, the chrome on the bottom, the chrome accents around the windows, the sort of luxurious vinyl quarter top on it with brome d'elegance. Weed whacker. There's not even weeds over there. I think he's just doing that to piss me off. 
uh, the opera lights next to it, uh, the big script there. It's just absolutely gorgeous to me. And this is a Cadillac built by people who knew what Cadillacs were. They weren't 600 horsepower, well-handling cars that toured the Nuremberg Ring. They were skinny steering wheel boats that you navigated down the roads in incredible comfort. So, love the Fleetwood script on the back. I even miss this, the old gas can or gas cap behind the license plate thing. So, uh, to open that, we put that guy. It conveniently stops so we can get the key in. So what you got for your extra Cadillac money? Trading in my Chevy for a Cadillac ek ek. Uh, anyway, I've got all my crap in there, including a painting of a dog. I shouldn't get into that, but that's a good friend of mine who lost his dog recently. Tragic story. Uh, the dog got sick. He had a declining illness. It was all very sad for everyone. And then he got run over by a Class A motorhome. Uh, and, and it just was not what anyone was excited. Not like one of those, you know, small, not even like that. I mean, we're talking like a Greyhound bus size. <sighs> anyway, it was very sad. Uh, you can see back here you've got lots of room for stuff. Uh, you've got the original caddy floor mat under my bags of crap. Uh, you got the original uh, floor mats for inside. Those are the mats for uh, the trunk. You've got a uh, hilarious little donut spare up there. So apparently that was starting even in 1983. Uh, you've got the jacking instructions, which, well, we won't get into that. And uh, everything real nice and lovely back there. Need a little white lithium on those hinges. You saw that suck down. Love it. That um, when you would pop up the trunk, that little hook comes up, and then lets you soft close it with a electric pull down. All very lovely. These things, this is neat. Uh, those are indicators for the lights, and that had been going on for many years at GM, using fiber optic cable. So that was an easy my way to uh, monitor your lights to see if they were uh, working. Uh, if one of those things was out, then the light itself was out. Okay, under here on this rather well-kept car, you can see the uh, original V8 is in great shape. Everything looking nice, very proper. Big shroud there. Uh, this is a digital fuel injection. Of course, this is the age of Tron, so don't even know what that means, but uh, apparently it's digital. It replaced that 864 thing, uh, which essentially was the old-style V8, but with this... Uh, had an Atari 2600 telling it when to deactivate cylinders and it worked like crap so they gave it up. Uh, that was replaced with this 4100 that would run for a few years uh, before it was given up just to go with a full uh, generic 305 Olds or Chevy motor that they put in these things. Uh, this was an alloy V8 with cast iron cylinder liners, uh, obviously fuel injected, put out about 12 horsepower and uh, was truly the height of the malaise era of uh, V8s for general motors. I mean, it is weak and sad and pathetic. Uh, but here's the thing. I don't care. I don't care. Uh, you know, I had drag. Hey, I bought this thing and I thought, man, this would be a great car to put an LS motor in, even like a 5.3 truck motor. Uh, you know, it'd have horsepower, it would have this, that. Yeah, that's all true, but it costs money. So uh, I just leave it the way it is with this 4100, underpowered, but still V8 and good enough to motivate the thing down the road. Uh, unlike many 4100s, this thing still runs great, smooth, nice, obviously been well looked after, uh, good cold air conditioning conditioning and uh, everything working as it should under here with the exception of the light that isn't working I don't know why it's hanging even it's popped out so man maybe we can fix that I don't know we'll see love it love the Cadillac crests or the uh, script on the chrome mirrors I don't know. I just dig this car all right, behold the interior. Because it is the uh, Delegant series, uh, that means you get this extra special leather with the pillow stuff. So, I mean, this is nicer than any seat in my house. I mean, it is just soft, lovely, supple. And for a, uh, what, 37-year-old car, it's incredibly well-preserved. Uh, you've got a back seat suitable for your Canadians. Uh, you know, if you put a guy and a girl back there, they're probably going to breed. I mean, why not? I mean, the size of that is epic. Uh, comfy, lovely, cush. Uh, for a two-seat car, that's about as good as it gets. You stuff your... Uh, Canadians back there, and they are going to be incredibly chipper. Uh, the center uh, armrest thing does pop out too, uh, to uh, let you rest your tired Canadian arms. 
and uh, you've got map lights and you know clothes hangers and all that crap so everything nice you also got some floor mats back there with the wreaths and crests on them and uh, the world's largest map pockets of course this was the day before uh, navigation so you'd have those big Rand McNally road atlases and uh, that and some sandwiches and a you know probably a large Colt Python would fit in those things for you uh, door panels, lovely. Love all the faux wood with the little chromey bits. Uh, still nice and tight and together on this one. All your chrome switches and wreath and crest lights and mirror and the Fleetwood script. Oh God, this takes me back. This is, this is what I like. This is the Cadillac that I like. These are your seat controls so you can make yourself cushy. All working great. Let's fire this thing up. That door closes with authority. So very standard stuff, key in. You get all your uh, warning lights firing to life. It dings at you with this sort of very strong beep to let you know things are happening. You've got this pencil thin steering wheel with zero effort. Uh, it's got tilt and telescope. And the tilt is ridiculous. I mean, I can tilt this thing so far down it's undrivable. And I can tilt it up so it's like a, you know, 1974 school bus. It's just amazing. Uh, also a telescoping wheel. If I slide this over, you can move the column in and out to suit any size. I think a lot of the guys who drove these things were portly, so that was necessary. Get a little AC going. All right, so you've got your wipers over here, lovely stuff uh, with wash, push button, your light switch. It also has what they call that Twilight Sentinel, so uh, that'll turn itself, Sentinel headlights they call it. Uh, that'll turn them on when it gets dusky. You've got your cruise on and off. You've got a very simple uh, speedometer here. Now I know when I'm driving this thing, I'm gonna get tears in the comment section that the uh, odometer isn't working. Well, it is working. It's just the trip odometer is not. So you can see we're at 92.3. 52. Uh, by the time it ends, I promise it'll be higher. Uh, then you've got your PRNDL stuff. You've got your fuel gauge over there, your vents. You've got a symphony sound radio. Who is that, Brian Adams? Oh, God, I don't know. A little bit of a pain in the ass, that guy. Uh, your other manual mirror switch. Again, your climate control. Uh, all very nice stuff. You've got your instant fuel data. Uh, over here in the glove box with your Brome Delegant script, you've got your, uh, that's the key for the wire wheels, that's the original owner's manual, and uh, still even these two little tab code things for the wheel covers and the trim code, so nice to see all that stuff still with the car. Uh, even that little detachable uh, garbage can down there really brings me back to my youth. You can fill that up with crap and then pull it out and empty it. Uh, here you've got a nice big uh, rear view mirror, very simple. Uh, you've got uh, illuminated vanity mirrors to powder your nose, left and right. And uh, even this neat little place to put your garage door opener underneath the map light. So uh, all as it should be. And a column shift for the four speed automatic. Let's go for a spin. Actually, I want to hang the license plate so I can just keep going. Do that. We can pop the trunk with this guy. Hop out again. Got to get Peter's fountain going. And this is the little thing that pops up and down and sucks the trunk closed. So all you have to do is gently set it against that and it pulls it down nicely. Let's go for a spin. And this, again, is to me what a Cadillac is all about. The wreaths and the crests leading the way, the long swooping hood, uh, the little parking lamp indicators that tell you that your lights are on. It's just all fantastic. Uh, you've got this zero effort power steering. You've got V8 power, even if it's kind of pathetic. And, uh, you know, you're sitting on the world's most you know, sporting wise, it's the most unsupportive seat ever. Uh, but in terms of like, you know, your living room comfort, it's incredible. Absolutely incredible. 
Thank God for that. Oh, there's more history in this thing. Delegance, of course, stands for concours d'elegance, which is a real fancy French way of saying car show. And uh, that has been going on for centuries uh, when lords and ladies and, you know, their sultry chambermaids would go off into the field somewhere and show off their carriages to each other. So uh, everywhere you look on this car, it just harkens to history of some kind. Um, you know, I can, I can get on it a little bit. And there it is. I mean, it's, I mean, the quarter mile time, I looked it up, it's like 19 seconds in this car. It is not a fast car. Uh, you know, the V8 does give you a little bit of torque, so it does get the car rolling in a hurry, but it's not the point at all. I mean, this thing is made to just take on miles and gobs of highway or uh, tool the well-manicured streets of your golf community until you get to the country club and unload the bags. I mean, that's what this is all about. Uh, it is a Boulevard Cruiser, and uh, that's what makes it an absolute joy. Use it for what it's meant to be used for. Uh, you know, again, it's zero effort to drive this car. Steering it is pointless. You just, you know, there's that big pole there in the distance, so I'm just picking that to aim for, and I you know, make gentle course corrections as I drive. Lovely. And uh, that's the way you do it. You know, you can just put one pinky on the steering wheel if you want. So there it is. This is a car that thrills me. This is a car that makes me happy. I know a lot of people don't see it that way. You know, they want the modern stuff with the big V8s or twin, triple, supercharged four cylinders, you know, with 90 miles to the gallon and 800 horsepower. Uh, I'm opting out. I can do without. Give me this. Give me this full-framed, gentle Luxo barge, uh, you know, to tool my way around... Uh, uh, around the commoners in style and grace. This to me is what it's all about. If I want to go fast, I'll take something to the racetrack. I don't need to go racing around the streets. Uh, this is just absolutely lovely. Lovely, lovely. So anyway, there it is. Uh, got more fun stuff coming up. I bought a bunch of cars like this. I have a 76 Olds 98 I can't wait to take out. That does have a 455 rocket in it, so that's a Luxo barge with balls, but um, uh, that'll be up soon and some other neat stuff and uh, otherwise I really appreciate you guys having a look for sticking with us eventually the changes to the channel will come if not today if not tomorrow as soon as I can get somebody's ass in gear to do it and uh, we'll just keep going in the meantime so uh, thanks very much we appreciate it we'll see you with the next one take care so I forgot to point out and did want to point out that the odometer on this thing is working even if the trip odometer is not. So there we go. We got uh, 92353. We're going to stick with it until it changes. There it goes. 92354 without any movement from the trip. So uh, I'll try to fix the trip odometer, but I'm not sure I want to take apart this dashboard that hasn't been apart since 1983. It can get into more trouble than it's worth doing that. So no promises, but we'll give it a shot. Uh, thanks again. We'll see you hopefully tomorrow.